Okay, so I am going to start my critical thinking questions for chapter three now. The first question asks about um, vision and hearing, and they're generally believed to be the two most highly prized senses. And how would my life change if I lost my sight or my hearing, and which sense would I find most traumatic to lose? Well, it's really hard to imagine life without vision or hearing, two senses taken for granted by most people. But, um, and if the senses are limited, everything can be affected from interaction with one's surroundings, relationships, activities, and even feelings of anxiety and depression. Hearing loss can commonly be accompanied with loss of balance, and this can increase the risk of injuries. Also, depending on the age of hearing loss, it can affect the development of communication skills in children and language problems. Luckily, for hearing problems, treatment usually is available, whether it be a hearing aid, cochlear implant, or the usage of sign language. Um, but when it comes to vision loss, the social consequences can be very similar to hearing loss. Feelings of isolation and um, just communicating efficiently and having social interactions with your friends and your peers can be very difficult with hearing loss or vision loss. Um, and when it comes to vision loss, um, the consequences can vary, and if you are blind, it makes it very difficult to just use only your taste, smell, and hearing senses to take in information about the sensory environment. It would be really tough to interact with your surrounding environment, such as getting from place to place, or um, overall your movement can be restricted. Just simple tasks like personal care and making a meal um, can really pose an issue for somebody who is blind and all in all, independence can be compromised with vision. Um, while this is why I chose that um, vision would be the worst impairment for me, because um, while from both of these impairments, there's always a public perception that people with hearing or vision impairments aren't capable of functioning as well in society. But I think losing your sight would honestly be worse because I don't think there's as good of a substitute to vision loss um, right now with our scientific and medical advances as there is to hearing loss. You can communicate through sign language, for instance, or possibly get a cochlear implant, but it's a lot harder to adapt when you become blind. And also, I feel like losing sight comes with much more of a loss of independence than losing hearing. Okay, so the second question is talking about noise pollution and the extent of that banning noise hazards because they do contribute to hearing loss. Um, considering the workplace, home, automobiles, rock concerts, what do I think should be done to control noise pollution? Well, uh, common forms of noise pollution can come from transportation, music, um, machines. Simple rules, though, I think can be put into place, um, whether it be at the workplace, home, public, to avoid noise hazards. Firstly, avoiding, avoiding loud music is a really important issue in modern society because with the popularity of earbuds, the risk for premature hearing loss is increasing and precautions with music loudness should be taken. In the workplace, when working with loud noises, rules should be enforced with wearing earplugs. Um, and overall, there is a need for improved method of local control that should start with public education of noise pollution and then active enforcement of noise ordinances, whether it be in the workplace, home, or public. Okay, and the third question, based on my point of view, choose one of the statements and explain why I agree with it. Well, I will just say that I chose, well, I'll just start with this. Um, subliminal messages involve perception without sensation, which we read in the textbook, but how strongly does it affect behavior? According to the text, it probably can't produce the kind of behavior changes claimed, and therefore I don't really see a benefit or a disadvantage to this type of persuasion. However, I will agree with the second statement more that says, Secretly embedding subliminal messages in entertainment media violates individuals' freedom of choice. Therefore, this practice should be illegal. Um, I agree with this more because I don't believe that messages in the media should be used in any sort of persuasion. People are entitled to their own beliefs and opinions, and subliminal messages seems unconstitutional. Okay, so that does complete my third video. Thank you.